Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Late last night, the preliminary report about what happened in AI 171 was released and there is a shocker, a huge shocker. I'll come to that in just a moment. First, I want to walk you through what happened and I'm reading some sections of the report. The most important things are, of course, in the last few pages where all the summarization has been done. The, t the flight took off from... Um, <clears throat> The flight took off. This is UTC. I don't know what UTC means. My guess is that it is uh, Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time. So at 8.733, the flight was cleared for takeoff from runway 23. And before that, the pilot had requested that he needed the entire runway for takeoff and the permission was granted. There are a lot of things that I'm skipping here. You will see the complete report. Uh, we are going to try and put it on website on P Gurus. You can go and read there as well as it's going to be available on many places. So at within um, at 8.07.33, it took off. At 8.09.05, that is almost 90 seconds later, there is a May Day call. May Day, May Day, May Day. Okay, so we all know that. Then, then what happened is the interesting part. Now, before we go to that, remember there were um, there was talk about the black box being damaged and being sent to United States for further studies. Turns out that this airplane has two black boxes. It is called Enhanced Airborne Flight Recorder, EAFR. And these are located in two places, in the front as well as in the back. The one that got damaged was in the back from which they could not recover information. But the one from the front, they got everything from it and they have been able to decode. So this is a good news that at least from one of these recorders, the data was completely available because this is how it's going to be established as to what really went wrong with this plane and what would be the possible causes. I'll come to that in just a moment. I just wanted to tell you that out of the two flight recorders, one of them was fine. They could download the data. They could analyze the data and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to come to what happened before the plane took off. Just give me one second while uh, Okay, I, I read something in this report. It's a 15-page report and I'm not able to get to the exact, exact point. But when the Delhi to Ahmedabad leg was done, there was one thing that was reported to be checked. And that was checked and that was uh, ticked off as saying being good to go. That was the only thing that was uh, flagged in the report. Because every time the flight lands, right, somebody does a report. And that whatever it was flagged that was already that was checked and that was repaired or fixed or whatever and that was fine deemed fine and that they could take off from the um, airport so like i said 90 seconds there's a may day front uh, uh, black box recorder was indeed um, um was indeed recovered so now let us take a look at what happened in the uh, yeah, i got the information here on 12th june 2025, B787 Air India, bearing registration VTANB at Ahmedabad Airport operating flight AI423. So the flight number was AI423 from Delhi to Ahmedabad. So it lands in Ahmedabad. The crew of the previous flight, that is AI423, had made a pilot defect report, PDR entry for status message, stab pause excoder, XDCR. If I have to take a STAB stability and uh, POS positioning and XCDR means transcoder, I'm just guessing, wild guess, because that's all they have provided. They've not given the exact expansion of that, that this one was um, defective and the troubleshooting was carried out as per the FIM. Uh, I don't know what FIM means. It must be manual, flight something manual. Uh, by Air India's on-duty AME, again, I don't know what AME is, and the aircraft was released for flight at 640 UTC. 
again i don't like it they're going from indian standard time and utc universal trans anyway the the aircraft was scheduled to operate from ahmedabad to gatwick this is the london airport with estimated time of departure at 7:40 utc or 13:10 ist the flight was to be operated by flight crew comprising of you know all the details of people and so on and so forth and um, so at the time of take off the calculated vertical speeds uh, i think v speeds means vertical speeds with available conditions at take off were 153 knots 155 knots and 162 knots okay so as per the efr that is the black box the aircraft crossed the take off decision speed v1 which is 155 knots and achieved 153 knots at 080833 utc the v uh, speed of 155 knots was achieved as per the black box at 80835 two seconds later the aircraft air ground sensors transmitted to air mode consistent with lift off at 8839 four seconds later the aircraft achieved the maximum recorded air speed of 180 knots at about 8842 which is 3 seconds later and immediately thereafter the engines 1 and 2 fuel cutoff switches transition from run to cutoff so essentially the fuel was cut off to both the engines now what happens is who did that this is the question so here is where it gets very interesting so i can read it better this way and so there are two engines n1 and n2 began to decrease from their take off values as the fuel supply to the engine was cut off in the cockpit voice recording one of the pilots is heard asking the other why did he cut off the other pilot responded that he did not do so so if the pilots did not cut off fuel to the engines who did how did that happen this is the big question and uh, this this report goes on to say that the cctv cctv footage obtained from the airport showed ram air turbine getting deployed during the initial climb immediately after lift off no significant bird activity is observed in the vicinity of the flight path the flight the aircraft started to lose altitude before causing the air airport perimeter wall itself now there is another interesting thing here as per the the working uh, black box the engine one fuel cutoff switch transitioned from cutoff to run at about 8852 another 5 seconds later they lost power at 847 and at 852 5 seconds later the fuel cutoff switch transitioned from cutoff to run the apu inlet door began opening at 8854 consistent with the apu auto start logic thereafter the engine to fuel cutoff also transitions from cutoff to run when fuel control switches are moved from cutoff to run when the flight is in uh, aircraft is in flight each engine's full authority dual engine control fedec automatically manages a relight and thrust recovery sequence of ignition and fuel introduction so my understanding viewers and i am not an air fly airplane flyer so they manually i think try to switch it back from cut off to run and it looks like that did respond now what happens is this is 8852 so 9 seconds later okay i'm sorry 8852 engine 1 switches from cut off to run at 8854 8, two seconds later engine 2 fuel switch also transitions from cut off to run when fuel control switches are moved from cut off to run while the aircraft is in flight each engine's full authority dual engine control fedec this is the software automatically manages a relight and thrust recovery sequence of ignition and fuel introduction because the engine needs to fuel to start spinning again now the egt was observed to be rising for both engines indicating relight 
Engine one scored deceleration stop, reverts and started progress to recovery. Engine two was able to relight but could not arrest core speed deceleration and reintroduced fuel repeatedly to increase core speed acceleration and recovery. The EAFR recording stopped at 8, 9, 11. So that means 56, 8, 8, 56, the second engine turned from cutoff to run. Then 15 seconds later, approximately, what happened was engine 2 was able to relight but could not arrest core speed deceleration, which is slowing down and reintroduced fuel. Again and again, the guy is giving fuel to increase core speed acceleration and recovery. Unfortunately, at, at 8, 9, 11, the EAFR recording stopped completely. And at 8, 0, 9, 0, 5, which is six seconds before that, one of the pilots transmitted Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Okay. So this is what happened. They realized that somehow this thing had been cut off. They tried turning it back on. And one kind of tried to pick it up, one engine. The other one had some problems. Guys, I don't know what to make of it, but don't blame it on the pilots. I, I certainly don't blame on the... Again, I'm not an airline crash investigator. I don't have a degree in any of these things. But just reading the preliminary report, I don't think it was pilot error. Unless the pilot actually cut off and then said that I didn't cut it off. That doesn't explain why they tried to turn it back on. So they must have thought, okay, it's okay. This is a mistake. Just let's go back and turn it back on. So they tried doing that. It, it is just mind-boggling what has really taken place here. And uh, I don't think, you know, uh, more information will be obtained here. They need to. So what they have also done, by the way, they have taken all the parts and they have taken it to a secure place very close to the airport. And I think they are trying to put it back together. The correct investigation in such cases is to find out exactly, try and piece back the entire plane and then find out where the mistake occurred. So I think the problem could be an accidental glitch in the software, fade it, which caused it to totally cut it off, or some other thing that happened, which turned these things from cut off, from run to cut off. That's a very fatal, fatal command. How did that happen? Who sent that command and from where? So these are some of the problems that are facing the people who are investigating this. We'll have to give them some more time. But I think this is an excellent report. At least it tells you, some. you get some closure, especially the families of the pilots. Probably, you know, they'll have some closure. My guys, they tried the best they could to try and revive this plane. That's all I have. Let me see if there's any questions from any of you guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hans GEO, utter nonsense by Boeing. How much Boeing made paid for this cover up? Well, this appears to be the data from the working flight data recorder. The one does not work, that is the rear one, and the front one was working, and, and this appears to be the data recovered from that. So, I'm not saying that Boeing has lied or Boeing has not lied. I'm just saying that this is what has been done, it does shock us. Because how can a plane which is just about to take off and gather speed suddenly have the fuel cut off from both engines? Man, it's scary. Scary, scary. So uh, Bharat Extreme says both pilots were clearly shocked. It's a case of sabotage. They must be hiding something. Well, um, look, we, we have to wait and give them some more time. It's either malfunction, autonomous turn off or clear sabotage. Okay. Um, software glitch which could uh, which thought flight was on ground and didn't allow manual override that's why even after override it did not happen but actually engine one tried to go back and restart again it just didn't have time uh, can a plane be hacked from far away place like switching off the fuel switch sk digital i had told you that uh, i mean i i told it in one of the episodes that uh, the electronics in Boeing 787 are not hardened and an electromagnetic pulse could have done it. But then that begs the question, from where? 
who launched it, from where that pulse was. Then if the pulse was launched, then all the electronics must be fried. Nothing will be usable. But yet we know that the front data recorder has been seen to be functioning. Even if they find what the problem is, I don't think Air India or the Indian government will let on. Because these are things that are a matter of national security. The things that you will have to see is what other fixes are being done in the remaining 787 fleet of planes that are with Air India. And that will tell you a clue on what they found. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, 100% sabotage to Boeing or labeling on ter as terrorist attacks. Uh, well, wait, 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 wait. Give them some time. They are doing a good job of finding out what's going on. SK Digital, can a plane be hacked by switching off the fuel switch from far away place like a sabotage? That's what I just told you, right? That is possible. But again, that will have to be born with some other things also being fried. Electronics being fried. Only then you can say, okay, an EMP was hit. But then a focused EMP, kind of getting a little too specific, don't you think? We'll see. I don't want to assume anything. I just wanted to share the details with you as soon as possible. Dinesh Kumar says, Guru, sir, the flight status software glitches the pattern. or All the last accident happened due to wrong flight status against the actual reality of the flight. But certainly, this tells us that FedEx was in play. That means it was also involved. Uh, last question, he wants to know, so fuel switch is the new MCAS. I don't know what MCAS is. Um, this, this is something that will have to be borne out. But at least it tells you that the pilots did their hardest to try and get the fl plane flying again. That's all I have, viewers. Very, very sad news. But I thought I should share what the findings of the preliminary report are with you. It's about 15 pages long. You can read it. I am just uh, you know, taking the last few important paragraphs and sharing them with you. Again, thank you so much. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back at 10 AM in Tamil with Sriram Seshadri, where we'll be going over the same thing in Tamil. Uh, Sriramji is not able to attend the morning session today. He's busy. So this is all. We'll be back at 10 AM IST for the Tamar episode. Namaskar.